Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we'd like to welcome you to your Monday's webinar. And to commence our program, may we encourage everybody to join us in our opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, you are glorified by the beauty of your creation and the noble handiworks of humanity. Help us to contemplate your beauty, both in nature and in works of art, so that we, moved by the light that shines from you, may be a light for our neighbor. May the labors of heritage advocates, cultural experts, and practitioners promote always what is good and beautiful. Bless all artists who create and express in your image, O God of creation, that their works may only reflect your truth. Preserve us from harm, restore our brokenness. Grant that we may conserve well our health, body, mind, and spirit, that our lives may become your enduring heritage to the world. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. I know we have our uh, constant um, webinar onlineers for our Writing Your Church Story online seminar workshop. This is the seventh episode of our webinar, and um, we are very glad that we are able to continue this, you know, despite the very difficult circumstance that we are undergoing. Now, this webinar is brought to you by the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, particularly the Episcopal Commission for the Cultural Heritage of the Church and the Church Historians Association of the Philippines. This is also in cooperation with the University of Santa Tomas Graduate School, Center for Conservation of Cultural Property and the Environment in the Tropics, and the Archivo de la Universidad de Santo Tomas. This uh, webinar is uh, live streamed on the following Facebook pages. So just plug in the CBCP News, also the University of Santo Tomas Graduate School, CCC PET, the CBCP Episcopal Commission for the Cultural Heritage of the Church, and 500 Years of Christianity in the Philippines. So as we move on and embark on the uh, topic of our resource speaker, we would like to remind our onlineers, our heritage frontliners, that as you watch our webinar, please, uh, we would like you to properly encode in the chat box your full name and institution so that uh, whenever you would like to raise a question or a query, we'll be able to acknowledge you. At the same time, this uh, chat box, you can um, forward your comments, questions, and of course, some of your maybe insights with regards to some of the topics that we will carry on this afternoon. Again, to listen to the message of the chair of the CBCP Commission, Episcopal Commission for the Cultural Heritage of the Church and also the Bishop of the Diocese of the Maguete. Let us all listen to the most reverend who's Polito B. Cortes for, this, uh, for his words. On behalf of the Bishop members of the CBCP Episcopal Commission for the Cultural Heritage of the Church, I would like to welcome all participants and netizens to this seminar workshop on writing Your Church Story online edition. I am thankful to the Church Historians Association of the Philippines, or CHAP, for gently heeding the clamor of the bishops 
to organize this very significant event so auspiciously convened this year as we mark the fifth centenary anniversary of the arrival of Christianity in the country. This has been long in coming, and we all must take this rare opportunity to review our past to make it today a guide for the future of Catholicism in our country. I extend my thanks to the UST Center for the Conservation of Cultural Property and Environment in the Tropics, or CCCPET, for hosting this church event. Their constancy to purpose guaranteed the launching of this online gathering. The considered study of history has been populated by both truth and falsity, reality and fantasy, the legendary and the mythical, claims and counterclaims. Historical revisionism to rectify historical errors on the basis of authentic primary sources contributes to the progress of the historical sciences. But historical revisionism to advance a personal agendum read through the lens of ulterior interest or undertaking to lionize a place or a person or an event harms the historical sciences and devalues the primary sources on which such activities are based. The study of church history is a prayerful search for historical truth, no more, no less. It is undertaken in a spirit of utmost humility and open-mindedness. It is never conducted in an adversarial fashion, nor in a combative mode, nor does it call names, but is respectful to an individual's person and reputation and faithful to the primary sources. After all, we all are, in the words of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, cooperators of truth. To be an authentic church historian, then, is to be dutifully obedient to the supreme truth, who is no other than the God incarnate himself. For as Jesus claims, I am the way, the truth, and the life. From John chapter 14, verse 6. I invoke St. Joseph's powerful intercession to whom St. Francis dedicates this year so that he will continually take care of the church who, in the words of St. Paul, is the pillar of and support of the truth from first timothy chapter 3 verse 15 may his and the blessed virgin mary's maternal intercession with the holy spirit's divine advocacy bring us to the fullness of truth who is jesus christ once again welcome to this seminar workshop on writing your Church Story Online Edition. With that, we would like to thank wholeheartedly um, Bishop Julito Cortez, and we move on to our seventh episode of Writing Your Church Story. So for this episode, we will listen to the archivist of the uh, Archdiocese of Manila. So our guest resource speaker is a graduate of the Pontifical Gregorian University in Rome. He studied church history there and at present, he serves as the director of the Archdiocesan Archives of Manila, AAM, and the Museo na Archidiocese ng Manila or MANA. 
He also leads the Manila Archdiocesan Commission for the Cultural Heritage of the Church. So may we all welcome Father Albert Cecilio Flores to share with us, you know, some notes and maybe valuable information that all of us can use and to connect to the Archdiocese Archives of Manila. Thank you. Welcome, Father Albert. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Good afternoon, Professor uh, Eric, no? Uh, Bev, no? And to all our uh, uh, viewers, no? Uh, of this uh, webinar. No? So magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. No? Uh, today's online lecture is basically a presentation on the Arch Archdiocesan Archives of Manila, no? or the AAM. Uh, first, we will... Uh, provide no, uh, uh, a profile no, of the Archdiocesan archives. No? And second, we will trace its history and describe its holdings. And then finally, we will give some pointers no, for those who wish to do research at the, uh, the archives. No? Uh, the archives, no, the Archdiocesan archives of Manila is the official repository of the records of the uh, Archdiocese of Manila and its various entities. No? by records, no, we refer to the documents produced and received no, by the various entities of the Archdiocese of Manila. No. So this would be the records of the Archbishop of Manila, the different parishes no, in the Archdiocese, the Curia offices, the ministries and apostolates, and other institutions or groups connected or tied to the Archdiocese. No. Our archival holdings no, include other records in certain forms or media, no? like photographs, maps, uh, plans, no? and micro reproductions. No? But unlike some other archives, like the Sydney Archdiocesan Archives, we do not keep films, no? sound recordings, and other non textual records. No? Um, as the official repository of the, the Archdiocese, no? the AAM ensures that its holdings are kept and preserved no? as authentic evidence of the administrative cultural, intellectual, and spiritual activities of the Archdiocese. No? Uh, the mandate no, of the AAM no, is really to maintain an archival holding of documentary materials no, concerning the spiritual and temporal affairs of the Archdiocese. No? So the role of the AAM no, within the Archdiocese, and this is understandable because it is a church institution, the role of the AAM within the Archdiocese follows the provisions of the 1983 Code of Canon Law, particularly Canons 486 to 491. These canons deal with the care, uh, control, custody, management, and the use of the diocesan uh, archives. So this is the organizational setup no, of the uh, Archdiocesan Archives of Manila. And we have two main sections, no, the research section and the conservation section. The conservation section is obviously responsible for preserving documents no, and restoring documents. No. Well, the research section handles, among others, requests no, for research assistance. No. So this is where uh, the scholars, no, this office deals no, with, with requests no, coming from scholars. No. Uh, this is the, the, the layout no, of, the, uh, of the office, no, showing the different facilities no, of the archives. No. The search room is the area for uh, researchers. This is where they can examine the materials or the documents that they requested. No? Well, the stack room is where we keep our holdings. No? The more important ones no, are located, uh, are kept in the vault. No? So just to go through some of these facilities. No? So this is the staff room, the search room and library where the uh, uh, researchers uh, can work. Uh, using also the uh, microfilm reader for some of the older documents. We have the library of rare books, uh, mostly coming from the collection of uh, Monsignor Abriol. And then we have the conservation lab. Uh, this is the stack room where we keep our holdings you know, and the vault where we have the more important uh, um, documents. Okay. Um, the AAM exists mainly in the service of the Archdiocese of Manila its archbishop and the various ecclesiastical entities connected to the archdiocese. No? So it houses the records of the archdiocese no? and its various entities, no? as well as other auxiliary records that reflect the work of the church 
within the archdiocese. No? So the arch, uh, the archives also attends to certain needs no? of curial offices no? uh, and other administrative units. No? For example, when a department like the chancery uh, needs to do a reconstruction of certain records and they would need background information, they would go to the uh, to the archives. Or when an office no, is handling uh, a particular case no, and they would like to go back to uh, earlier cases no, that would be more or less similar, they would also consult the archives. No. So as an ecclesiastical institution, the AAM has a primarily ministerial purpose. No. So it serves you know, the work of the archdiocese. No. But then the, the archives uh, also makes its resources uh, available to qualified researchers. Uh, this is done following the norms, of course, of canon law, as well as other criteria established by the local ordinary, you know, by the Archbishop of Manila and other competent ecclesiastical authorities. On the history of the, the, the archives, no? uh, the beginnings of the AAM no? cannot really be ascertained. No? Suffice it to say that consensus records keeping, most probably since the time of uh, Bishop Salazar and the first Bishop of Manila, no? uh, brought about no? the collection no? of the archives and archives. No? Uh, however, efforts to put the archives in order apparently started only during the term of Archbishop Michael O'Doherty. No? who was the Archbishop of Manila from 1916 to 1949. During the term of Archbishop O'Doherty, a partial listing no, of the holdings was attempted. Uh, for a long time, it seems, you know, and probably since its establishment, the Archdiocesan archives uh, were housed no, at the Alcibispado in Intramuros. But then sometime before uh, the Second World War, no, um, uh, the, the holdings no, were transferred to the University of Santo Tomas, no, to UST, no, and put under the care of Father Francisco Munoz. No. And, the, uh, and the move, no, the transfer, proved to be uh, fortunate no, since uh, it saved the collection from the devastation suffered by Intramuros no, during the liberation no, at the end of World War II. No. But then in the course of the transfer, no, an undetermined portion of the collection was lost no, because apparently it was uh, transferred, no, it was transported uh, in open trucks. No. Um, after the war, the archives moved to Villa San Miguel no, in Andaluyong, no, where it stayed for about two decades. No. And in 1969, no, it transferred to uh, San Carlos Seminary, no, where the documents were just packed no, in the uh, in a basement room. No, and there, without any temperature control, humidity control, no, or protection no, from uh, from pests and dust, no, the documents, or what was left of them, no, continued to uh, deteriorate. No. Uh, then in 1987, no, um, after Cardinal Sin built a new Arcipospado building no, that the archives returned no, to Intramuros. No. So it's uh, the archives is here right now no, in the Arcipospado no, uh, in Intramuros. No. Okay. Um, the total AM collection is appro approximately 7,000 cubic feet. No. There are about um, 650 boxes no, in the stack room. No. But this figure does not include no, the papers of the last three archbishops of Manila, no, namely Cardinal Sin, Cardinal Rosales, no, and uh, Cardinal Tagle. No. So we have more boxes to be cataloged and in, in indexed no, for the last three archbishops of Manila. No. Uh, in 1976, no, um, the, the archivist then, no, Sister Maria, uh, Maria Rita Ferraris, no, made a summary in, uh, inventory no, of the entire collection. Uh, it was apparently a, a laundry listing uh, of the collection. It was meant to be used. No, for developing uh, later on finding aids no, to help scholars no, and archivists, of course, no, to uh, locate no, documents no, in the uh, archives. No. Uh, Sister Rita also rearranged the collection. No, she re rearranged the, um, the archival holdings. No. Before the uh, documents no, were bundled up, bundled up in Spanish uh, style legajos no, and arranged uh, in alphabetical order no, of titles. No. Uh, and, th and this type of arrangement that you would most probably find it in our older archives. No? For instance, if you look at the, the, the Spanish uh, period documents no? at the National Archives of the Philippines, no? you will come across a similar uh, arrangement, a similar type of uh, uh, arrangement. No? The, uh, the Gajos ordered in alphabetical order no? uh, of titles. No? So Sister Rita uh, moved away from the kind of uh, arrangement and reorganized you know, the collection no? uh, into four uh, main record groups. Uh, or series. So you have record group one, which would be the general administration. It consists of documents 
um, pertaining directly to the functions of the Archbishop of Manila, the Archdiocesan Council, and other uh, ecclesiastical units. No? Record group two you know, would be the sacraments. No? Uh, it contains the records on the administration of the sacraments no? within the archdiocese. No? Well, record group number three would be on the personnel covering both the clergy and uh, the religious. Well, record group four no, would be asuntos generales no? or various topics that would not fall under the first three uh, categories. No? Now, each uh, record group no, is divided into several uh, series. No? Uh, and each series, no? so each series no, is further subdivided into uh, sub series. No? So, this is the record group one divided into series, and each series now would be further subdivided. No? So you have, uh, for example, in the uh, record group one, you have about eight series. No? Uh, and each series would be further subdivided. No? Let us just look at the first one, uh, the first series on the records group one, no? Archbishop of Manila. So you have this sub-series, no? uh, administration of the archdiocese, uh, and then, of course, you have those Spanish-era uh, documents. No? And then each series would then be divided into folders or units that would contain the documents. No? So this is the kind of arrangement that Sister Rita uh, did, no? moving away from the old order. No? And um, so uh, th this kind of arrangement, no? we will maintain for the, ma for the material no? that, uh, that uh, uh, she handled. No? But beginning with the term of Cardinal uh, Sin, no? uh, and then and, and, uh, in the period thereafter, no? we will uh, uh, um, or arrange the archives no? more or less according to how they're being transferred by the different entities. No? Because in this old, uh, in this arrangement being based on Rita, no, there's a, there would be a tendency to break no? some of the documents coming from other units. No? For example, some documents coming from the parishes. No? So we'd, you'd have to break them if you would fit them according to this type of arrangement. So we will maintain no? the, the transfer no? of records no? in the new arrangement. No? Uh, so yeah, that would be the uh, the uh, classification of the holdings. So, uh, Sister Rita also classify the collection according to the record format and subject. No? So we'll just go through some of the uh, uh, the way she the, she uh, classified the records. No? So she we divided them according to uh, for, uh, to the format: manuscripts, prints, um, books or registers, and then also the non-print material, uh, the microfilms. No? Uh, then maps, plans, and titles. No? Then they, they also divide according to the, the type of records, no? uh, uh, the subject, no? initiatives, personnel, financial, sacramental, and historical records. So this will be the type of administrative records that we have in the uh, archives. No? So we have the Libro del Gobierno Ecclesiastico, the oldest record dating back to the early part of the 17th century. It's a record book of church administration, uh, the uh, directives coming from the Archbishop of Manila and other instructions. Then you have the uh, uh, cedularios, it's a collection of uh, uh, cedulas. No? Then you have, uh, for example, the, the series uh, of uh, records under the cofladias. No? So this would be uh, religious organizations that would have a twofold function, no? promoting, uh, on the one hand, uh, uh, pious devotion, uh, for example, the devotion to the Holy Rosary, devotion to uh, Sacred Heart, and then at the same time also promoting something charitable, charitable work, like supporting a school, supporting uh, an orphanage, uh, or other uh, ecclesiastical institution. Then you also have a series of records, now, which would be the, 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 the canonical books, like the baptismal books, the confirmation books, uh, the registers no, of the burials in the parish. No? So this would be under record uh, group number two. Okay. Then also you have financial records. No? Uh, this is the capellanas, which would really be the endowments no, given to the uh, archdiocese no, by pious persons. No? Uh, normally they would set aside a portion of their uh, uh, um, uh, wealth. Uh, for a pious uh, intent, no? uh, not only for to the benefit, no? the, the, uh, the the patron, the donor, no? uh, uh, in terms of saying masses for them, no? for their souls. No? Uh, then, of course, you have the obras pias, no? the pious works, no? uh, also charitable, charitable endowments, no? uh, which the archdiocese also 
uh, managed. Okay. Um, before uh, talking about the, the uh, research at the AAM, now let, let me just say it, that I think it's uh, it's helpful that we have that we we know uh, something about the nature, the profile, and the purpose, no? and the history of the Archdiocesan archives. No? The knowing these things would help us in our research, and I, and I think it's true for any for any archive in which we're planning to do some work. No? So knowing these things, not knowing uh, the, the, the nature of the archives, its history, we will have an idea of what kind of research we can carry out using the material. Uh, in the in the archives, no? I do think you, you would consider the AAM no? as a primary research archive to know about uh, economic conditions, for instance, no? in Spanish colonial Philippines, no? or 19th century trading. No? Although the archives, the AAM, would, may have some documents uh, that, that may provide uh, supplemental uh, information. For example, uh, in some of the documents concerning the obras dias, no? uh, or the uh, endowments, no? that would you know, invest some of their money in, in some of these. Uh, uh, enterprises, no? or uh, yeah. So you 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 have to know what kind of archives you're dealing with to be able to uh, to understand to understand no what kind of research you can carry out using the documents, the holdings, no, of the archives. No? Uh, related to this, no? if you know something about the archives, then we will also have an idea of what kind of documents more or less we can expect. No? So if you go to the AAM, for example, no, you will not expect expect to find a uh, certain type of records, no, like military records, no. Uh, or uh, financial records no? uh, of the uh, of the uh, colonial government. No? Uh, although uh, it may be uh, kind of obvious, but sometimes we get queries no? asking us if we have uh, such type of uh, documents. No? Now, since uh, the AAM is not primarily a research, uh, it's, it's not primarily a research institution. No? It's not intended really to serve no? the general public no? and to, to function as a research institution. Only those qualified and having a legitimate interest no, in its holdings are uh, allowed admission. No? So normally these would be uh, graduate students, postgraduate students, no? professional researchers, or researchers tied to um, institutions of higher learning, no? like uh, university professors. No? So in the application uh, for research, no, we ask the applicant to identify no, their research topic and to state the purpose no, of their study. No? If the application is uh, uh, approved no, and access is granted, no, there are certain regulations and constraints that uh, must be observed you know, by the researcher. You know. They're given a guide you know, which uh, would cover how to go about doing research you know, in the uh, AAM, you know, as well as the documents access policy you know, of the archives. You know. To facilitate also research you know, in the archives, finding aids uh, uh, were developed. You know. um, we have, for instance, the uh, uh, summary inventory you know, prepared by Sister Rita Pelaris. You know. We also have the catalog uh, published by Bishop Rupert Santos of Balana when he was the director of the uh, Archdiocesan Archives. No? Then we have the indices, no? which are based no? on the title, uh, on the box titles no? uh, or record group series no? prepared by uh, Sister Rita. So we have those uh, type of indices, no? title index, uh, date index, name index, subject index. No? And also we have the catalog no? covering uh, our microfilm collection. So they, in a way, they facilitate you know, the search you know, uh, for records. You know, uh, if you once you start working in the in the archives. You know. okay. Now a few words. You know, uh, let me say a few words. You know, uh, for those who wish to do research at the AAM you know, uh, for the writing of their parish histories. You know, since um, uh, the uh, um, this webinar is really uh, it, it has been prepared you know, uh, with uh, with this intent in mind you know, to help. Uh, um, those who wish to come uh, write uh, and do their parish histories. No? Um, for some places, no, there will be um, some materials here, here no, in the Archdiocesan archives. No? Uh, Manila was um, established as a, a diocese no, in 1579, no? so for then of Mexico, and it basically covered no, uh, the whole archipelago, the whole Philippines. No? Uh, in 1595, no, it became an archdiocese, and territories no, were taken from her to establish a new suffragan seas. No? Uh, of uh, Nueva Segovia, Nueva Cáceres, and, and Cebu. No? Now, we do not have much records no, in the archives no, for this period of no, 1579 no, to 1595. No? And so we do not really have anything substantial no, um, 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 on Vigan, on Naga, and Cebu no, for this particular period. No? This latter part of, um, um, of the 16th century no, was the uh, initial phase no, of the Evangelization of the islands, no? and the work was done no? 
mainly by the four religious orders from the Augustinians, Franciscans, Jesuits, and Dominicans. No? And so their archives would probably be more helpful for this period. No? Um, from 1595 to the early part of the 20th century, no? and this would be the, the whole Spanish colonial era no? in the first decade of the American period, no? the extent of the Archdiocese of Manila basically uh, remained the same. No? So it covered um, the area of present-day uh, uh, Metro Manila, Bulacan, uh, Cavite, Laguna, Rizal, Batangas, uh, Quezon, Mindoro, Bataan, uh, Pampanga, Zambales, and Nueva Ecija. Uh, uh, in 1910, uh, the Diocese of Lipa and the Apostolic Prefecture of Mindoro were created, and, and these territories now were separated from uh, the Archdiocese. Uh. In 1928, uh, the Diocese of Lingayen was established, uh, and 26 parishes were taken from, from Manila. Uh, in 1948, uh, the San Fernando Pampanga, the Diocese was created, separating the northern part no, of the old archdiocese, the archdiocese then. No. This would be the provinces of uh, Pampanga, uh, Bataan, no, and Nueva Ecija. No. In 1961, no, you have the diocese of Imos and Malolos, and they were established, no, separating therefore the provinces of Cavite and uh, Bulacan no, from the archdiocese. No. In 1983, you have the diocese of uh, Antipolo being established, separating Marikina and the Rizal province no, from the archdiocese. No. And then, at the start of the 20, 21st century, no, the, 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 the uh, five um, uh, ecclesiastical districts no, of the archdiocese then no, became dioceses. No. In 2002, uh, Nova Ligius and Paranaque were created. In 2003, we have Cubao, Pasig, and Caloocan. No. So, obviously, parishes no, of the archdiocese no, of Manila right now no, will have material, some materials in the archives. No. But also, the, the parishes in these areas that used to belong to the archdiocese. We likewise have some materials uh, in the archives now. Um, having said that, no, I, I think we also have to take into account no, certain uh, conditions, as it were, you know, during the Spanish uh, colonial uh, period. No. Um, for the most part of the Spanish colonial era, most parishes no, were run by the religious orders. Uh, moreover, because of the controversy no, uh, over Episcopal visitation, no, parishes um, were not visited regularly by the uh, Archbishop. No? Uh, the Council of Trent no, uh, decreed no, that uh, uh, the, the the bishop no, should uh, regularly visit no, uh, the parishes in his diocese. And even today, that's a discipline no, according to canon law. No? But because of certain uh, issues no, related to the visitation, this was not carried out regularly in the Spanish colonial era. So this would be the Episcopal visitation controversy. No? And so in the archives, we have very few reports no, of these visits. No? And so for the older parishes no, established no, during the Spanish colonial era, no, there would probably be more um, material no, in the archives of the various religious orders that handled parishes no, uh, um, um, in the uh, archdiocese. No. Um, that's why in, 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 uh, also in the presentation of our webinar, no, we started with the, the, the archives of the religious orders, no, the Recollex, Dominicans, no, uh, the Jesuits. No. Uh, because for, for the parishes established in this period, you, know, you probably find more documents you know, in these uh, archives. You know. Now, if you look if you look at the foundation dates you know, of Spanish era parishes, you know, about half of them were actually founded only in the 19th century, you know, the 1800s. You know. And so for the so uh, uh, the four volume work you know, of uh, Professor Ricky Jose, you who know, was the Almas, you know, would be a valuable tool. You know, uh, as you start, you know, as you attempt to write your parish history, you know, say if you wish to reconstruct your parish history, you could use the, the list of parish piece you know, uh, found you know, in the Pulse de Almas you know, as a kind of jumping board for your for your research, you know, kind of structure to help you guide you know, uh, your research as you search for materials you know, for the history of your parish. You know. okay. yeah. Now, for about the 50 parishes you know, in the current Archdiocese of Manila you know, established um, in the late 1500s, you know, um, to 1970, you know, we have the following distribution in terms of date of establishment. You know, we have about in the, in, in, in the current archdiocese, we have about 17 parishes uh, founded uh, in the Spanish colonial period, you know, uh, while we have about 10 parishes founded in the um, uh, first half of the uh, 20th century, you know, and then from 1950 to 1970, we have the 24 parishes. You know, so we have. Uh, basically, we have some parishes that will more or less be uh, new, you know, 
Uh, and so in, in doing research no, in, in, in trying to come up with parish histories for these parishes, no, um, um, one can also use oral history. No? Perhaps there will be some people who would still be around no, uh, who would be uh, uh, who could help no, in trying to uh, 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 give some stories about uh, the foundation of the parishes, uh, the life of the parish uh, as it was beginning. No? Uh, the oral history could also uh, help us the, uh, uh, write the history of certain other uh, practices, no, devotions, traditions, no, in the parish, no, which would sometimes not be found no, in the records kept no, in the archives. This is that you have to also have a certain discipline no, if you embark on doing oral history, no, since uh, you have to also to check and validate no, the uh, the uh, the information obtained no, from the interviews no, of uh, uh, that you make no, uh, as you do uh, oral history. So basically, these are the, just the points that I wish to um, uh, uh, highlight. No? Uh, if you want to do research no? in the archdiocese of in the archdiocese areas of Manila, no? uh, in relation to uh, uh, your parish research, no? basically there are other research topics that you could uh, explore no? uh, using the material from the um, archdiocese archives. No? Of course, we get requests no? for uh, uh, those doing uh, family histories, no? uh, genealogy, no? but uh, there are other topics that can be, you know, explored, no, uh, if, uh, using the materials from the archives. No, of course, there's local church history, parish history, uh, work on parish peace. Uh, you can also explore church architecture, since we have some material also uh, on, on plans no, of, of uh, churches. Uh, also, the uh, uh, Administration of the, the diocese, no, and uh, parishes, no, uh, from the perspective of the instructions given no, by the uh, the archbishop, no, and other religious leaders, uh, and other topics, no, that can uh, yeah, can benefit no, from the use of the material, no, uh, in the archives. Okay, so, so I leave uh, some time now for some questions. Okay, thank you very much, Father Albert. Uh -uh. So may I request everybody, you can use the Q&A box or the chat box to raise some of your questions and something that you would like to inquire and address to uh, Father Albert. No? Um, so are we, are we heard? Okay, by your audio, Father Albert. Uh, Father, not, ayan, okay. Yes. Yes, okay. Oh, may tanong na kaagad dito, Father Albert. Okay, Jimmy. From Jimmy Cipriano Uy. Uh, Father, ang aming parokya sa Tagig, Dambanang, Pang-Archeodesis, Diocesis, at parokya ng Santa Ana, dating bahagi ng Archeodesis ng Manila, bago map mapasama sa Diocesis ng Pasig. So, naideklara po kami bilang Dambanang, Pang-Archeodesis, 1989, ni Jaime Cardinal Sin. Mayroon po bang mga kopya dyan sa ARCAM ng mga deklarasyon ng pagiging dambana ng aming parokya? Um, so it's the Archdiocesan Shrine, no? Um, there should be some, there should be copies of uh, of, of, of the records here. But, but these are recent documents kasi. So it's not really open for uh, research, eh, yung, yung period na to. So internally, they can ask, no? Uh, uh, and then we can do uh, um we can locate, no, if it's an official request, no, coming from say the bishop or the parish priest, no. But normally for records like this, no, na major recent, we uh, uh, it's not open no, for uh, for uh, for for research, no. So usually, may uh, uh, official request for for something like this, no, if, especially if they if they if they want something, you know, uh, if they need a, if they need those records, no, for uh, I don't know, maybe some official um, project, no. Mm -mm. But we should have some records, you know. Kasi actually, okay. shrine lang to, eh. yeah. uh, 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 uh. So most likely, Sir Jimmy, meron. Yes, uh, no? Most yes. likely. Oo naman. So, si Cardinal yes. Sin na yan. Eh. Kaya, yes. <laughs> um, meron na yan. There are also some documents kasi with a chance read that have not yet been transferred to us. Ah, okay. Yes. Kasi may nasa current, ano pa sila eh? Current, uh, um, di ba meron... Uh, there's normally we make a distinction between historical archives and current archives. 
Mm-hmm. And so we, there's a regular schedule for transferring the records. No? So normally, if it's still a current one, uh, or if they belong to the current archives, they're, not, they're, they're still there with the office. Okay. So we have to check whether it's with us or with the chancery. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, we, may, may isa dito, diretso sa akin, cellphone, Father. So, please ask Father Albert, Father, kung hindi, uh, how does one access the archival collection of AAM? Ngayong pandemic, is there any um, way to access? Oh. Uh, actually, we're not open. Eh? We're not open to uh, uh, oh. researchers right now. In fact, uh, oh. Since the pandemic, work from home arrangement. So, yung work namin ngayon will be processing some of our documents. Mm-hmm. So, yung, because of the arrangement that, that we made, no, we cannot uh, assist. No, yung mga, uh, the, uh, yung mga, we cannot respond to the request no, uh, coming from, uh, from, from uh, different parts. No? So, we apologize for hindi no, maka, maka, maka tugon, no, sa mga ano nila, request. Pandemic kasi. So, oh, 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 oh. Ito yata yung mga rabid researchers na even online. Busy, busy uh-huh. ngayong pandemic. Yeah. Okay. Another question here. Will some records prior to the establishment of the Diocese of Antipolo be available in the archives? Kasi our parish po is trying to collate records and pronouncements of the establishment of our parish in the year 1975. Antipolo. And we'd like to know the process of checking and obtaining copies available in the AAM. Uh-uh. So how is this, Father? Uh-huh. Do you think there are records na nandiyan sa inyo? Oh, Antipolo, the establishment of the Diocese of Antipolo. Yeah, like what I said earlier, no, uh, most, probably there, most probably there would be records. No? Uh, kasi recent lang talaga ito. Yung uh, creation of the Diocese of Antipolo, recent lang yan. No? So we have, ano, we, we will have records. No? But again, since they're they're part of the more recent ones, no, hindi sila open for research. And usually, pag ganito, official requests yan coming from official channels, no, like sa parish priest mm-hmm. or the bishop. Mm-hmm. Oh, kasi um, medyo recent yan. Eh. Oh, yeah. And then it would take some time to process kasi we have other requests no, coming from Anuwe. Eh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh-uh. So I think everybody would like uh-huh. also to... I don't know kung open ka dito, Father. Uh, is it possible to get the contact details of Father Albert? Oh, meron kami maybe yeah. the ano na lang. We, we have an official no um yung arkam arkam that archives arkam okay. at, at arkam dot org. So we have an official so website ng uh, arkam. We have uh-huh. an uh, uh-huh. meron doon uh, so, so website ng arkam. So maybe we will flash it later no after yeah. no ating uh, uh, webinar so you yeah. can. Maybe forward all the archives. Last time, because you know, personal anyway. <laughs> but yeah, hindi ho yung personal ha, ni Father yeah. Albert. Yeah. Yung, it's kandado yan. Baka if, mabaya if, mapunta. If, ano po ito 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 ito? Oo. Doon po sa Arkham ha, doon yung i-address. Baka Bebe. mamaya sagutin kayo ni ano, ni Cardinal. Cardinal <laughs> Chiu. <laughs> Kung saan-saan mapunta yan dyan sa loob ng Archdiocese. Okay. No, no, don't worry. May say something. For the official records kasi, nung mga ganun nag-separate sa diocese, we did, um, si, ano, si Nina will be talking about uh, writing parish history next, next, next week, no? Next, yes. Next, next, next yes. week. Um, before, ano kasi, we had an arrangement with, ano, with, um, what do you call this? With, um, um, uh, we made an arrangement with San Fernando Pampanga Diocese, no? Their, their holdings, would be copied and so uh, in uh, and then uh, your copies would be deposited in their archives mm-hmm. so official you know, official arrangement on diocese to diocese mm-hmm. so the, uh, the the researchers don't have to uh, go to the uh, uh, archives to do research but instead they could you know, they could go to the uh, archives of the archives of san fernando and so your policy and access would depend on the you know, on the uh, policy of the uh, diocese. Kasi exactly. sa amin talaga hindi pwede uh, uh, yung mga bago. No? So, mm-hmm. so, uh-uh. so, we will be more enlightened next week, no? Because we'll have another speaker from the Diocese of San Fernando who will also elaborate on the operations of how their archives uh, services all of these queries that you have. Oh, ito kay Father Tony. 
So, Father Albert, would Father Albert have any figure regarding the number of canonical parishes yan, in the Archdiocese of Manila for the year <laughs> 1898? So, if so, how did he come up with this number? Ako? Uh, actually, uh, Tony, yes, I have. For this presentation, we <laughs> tapos maglista. <laughs> <laughs> Father Tony, meron daw. Hindi lang tapos maglista. Oh, no, yeah. ibibigay oh. na lang sa'yo. Uh, oh. Ibibigay na lang sa'yo. Hindi lang tapos maglista kasi uh, kinulangan ng oras. But mer meron kaming listing of the parishes eh. Uh, before nga yung ano, uh, towards the end of this, ano, itong Spanish colonial era. I was thinking oh. na at yun yung ano. Oh. Oh. So meron, meron, meron. Yeah, we have. Yes. Oh, oh. Thank you, Father Tony, for that query. Parang napakahirap naman itong tanong ni Father Tony. Yung pala eh, listing lang yung uh, mabusisi listing. lang yung listing. Uh -huh. Mabusisi, mabusisi. <laughs> Thank you, Father Tony. Thank you, Father Albert. So, another question here from Iloilo. No, Sir Rene Transe. Thank you, Father, for your lecture. Is there a possibility that you will make some of your records available online? Like in other cultural heritage institutions. Uh -huh. no? May plans ba kayo to upload it somehow uh -huh. on a platform that's uh, public access? Uh, unfortunately, yung, um, yung policy namin kasi talaga, yung, we, we, I don't think we can, you know, we can afford to have the documents, uh, uh, to upload the documents uh, online. No? Um, um, paano ba paliwanag yan? No? Um, I know other repositories are doing that. No? They're converting their holdings to digital format and uploading them. But kasi sa amin, it, 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 it costs eh. We're, it's more the, the, uh, the financial consideration. Kasi yung... Uh, uh, yung uh, yung cost of getting someone to uh, to upload. convert, convert. And to upload no uh, that cost no okay. and then yung uh, keeping them in the digital format no and then up upgrading no to new technologies mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, we would rather spend money on the uh, preservation and, and conservation and since you access kasi how many will be accessing now no? kasi for me yung digitization is more with the issue of access. No? Mm -hmm. eh, we do, we do naman, man, parang usually, uh, we, how uh, we, um, we, we study how many are really accessing our, 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 our records, no? the mm -hmm. number of scholars, uh, coming to the archives, no? eh, but to spend uh, this much amount no? to, ano lang, to, 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 to cater to, to researchers, parang hindi yung priority ng, ano, eh, ng, uh, Ng, uh, ng, art, ng office. So, mm -hmm. hindi, or not in the near future, unless we get a donation. No? <laughs> no. uh -oh. But, uh, uh -oh. mm -hmm. that is spent talaga for the preservation and restoration. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, this one is another one. Father Albert, what references would be a good source about the Manila Synod of 1582? Um, I think that uh, see si Professor Paul Dumont of UAP just published no, a book on the Manila Synod. Yes, oh, oh. nakita yeah. ko yung book na yan. It's a very yeah, it's a few years ago uh, published book. Yeah, oh, oh. there have been so, there have been a couple of ano na, na, na sulat na about the Manila Synod. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, from Father Tony, oh, another one. Oh, ilan lahat Schumacher says two hundred ninety. Sinod ko na lang sa kanya. <laughs> <laughs> yung other Tony relentless talaga. Ilan, uh, <laughs> dinidemand, dapat tapos ang listahan na yan. So, so, we don't really know, Father, Father Ton. Ibibigay na lang daw ni Father ano, Albert sa iyo. I uh, think he's doing a research of how. No, ito si Father Tony. Let's check if there are other questions addressed to you. Okay, meron pa dito. From the Diocese of Imos. So, does AAM keep records of appointments of parish priests yes. as well as photographs of these priests? Ah, interesting. I've been trying to collate archival materials for the parish mm -hmm. of Demos, part of Arkham until 1961. Thank you, Father Albert. Meron po, Father yes. Albert? Um, yeah. This material, yeah. This, so, the material would still be with the chancery. So, meron pa yan sa chancery. So, it's it's not with us, but with the Chancery Office. And I think you have to make a, a formal request. No? Kung official siguro to ng parish, no? pwedeng matulungan yan. No? Official request. So it's not with us, but it's with the Chancery. For the photographs, baka meron kami, no? especially yung sa mga souvenir books. No? 
that na uh, deposits archives no but for the official uh, appointment records no um and yon uh, yeah mm -hmm. okay so uh, siguro ang follow up ni Father Ton dito oh sabi ni Father yes, Ton uh, I'm not asking for details the figure is yes, yes, uh, for a general picture of the Philippine church history like how many parishes were yes. really run by the religious yes, orders yes, I understand. and how uh, many by the yes, secular uh, clergy Tama nga yes, naman, yes. No? Yes, it gives uh, us a very uh, well-defined picture of the whole yes. uh, Catholic uh, religious, religious setting yes. you know, at a particular time. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes, uh -huh. So maybe we can ask, uh, we're almost uh, finishing our webinar. Maybe ask uh, Father Albert, maybe some more, maybe your parting words. No, for this one. Ah, meron pa dito. Are there available sources about the establishment of chapels inside parishes from 1800s? No? From Francis Briones. Establishment of chapels uh, inside parishes from the uh, 19th century. Um, yeah, kasi some parishes will have uh, um, yung mga chapels, no? Um, Again, you have to know. I think you'd have to, to uh, look look at the archives also of the religious. I said they would mention that eh, in some of their uh, reports. No, the documents sa 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 Manila sa archives and archives of hand. No, I iba kasi yung kapelanyas eh. They're not really chapels. No, iba yung listing na kanina nakita yung kapelanya. They're really more the endowments. No, uh, in exchange for yung masses. No. Uh, said for the pious souls no merong uh yeah they would leave no a portion of the wealth of the archdiocese no these are not the chapels no yung nasa kapilanya listing no but uh offhand no i uh here and there i don't i don't i am not uh, um uh um so sure no kung merong ano, uh, material on the chapels no so it's probably with the with the uh religious orders and the archives no okay uh -uh. Let's see, are there other questions? Hmm. Ah, ito siguro. Final question. No, this was uh, sent to us by um, ano lang to, not through our, I think Facebook ito, Father Albert. So, he's asking, I'm from Cebu and I work mm -hmm. in the Basilica Minore de Santo Niño. What are some advices that you can uh, provide us for setting up an archive na hindi po isang parish? Oo, not under the parish. Archive na hindi isang parish. Oo. So maybe they just uh, repository or archival, archival center. Hindi siya parish archives. Eh. Mm -mm. Is it tied to the, uh, the basilica, the shrine? No, oh, I think he's working there. Uh -oh. I work for the basilica. But and what he's asking, it's not really yeah. putting up an archives there. It's another archives, apparently. No? Oh. So maybe some basics on putting up an archive. Uh -oh. What are the fundamentals of putting up an oh, archive? Ano kasi basically the, the archive will really just reflect the life of the institution. No? Uh, it, it begins really with records management. So any office will generate records, uh, produce, uh, produce records, and receive records. No? And these records will all be uh, uh, organized in a certain way no, by the office itself. No? So you know, office is nothing like yon, like office C, Professor Eric, no? my office right now. We're generating records, no? You know, as we pursue our activities, and we classify them. At a certain point, some of these records you'd have to sort them out, no? Some will be kept, no? You can, we have what we call the retention schedule. Some of the records you keep, uh, no, for five, three years, five years, depending on certain uh, uh, conditions. And some you would keep because you say that they have a permanent historical value, and then you move them to the uh, to the archives, no? Uh, I said they're, they're important for later on, no? for you know, for for, uh, for administrative purposes and other things. No, so basically it, it starts with records management. No, so ngayon palang kung 
when you plan set up an archives for your office, you make sure that yeah, you manage your records very well. No? Although, of course, now we're dealing with various types of records. Eh? Hindi lang yung, uh, yung documentary uh, records, but also yung records yes. in digital form. For example, in this problem is right now, no, how to capture our messages between, before you had letters, eh? now text messages, eh? and sometimes they, 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 you know, communication between people, no? between institutions. No? So how do you capture those text messages no? or email? Do you print them out? Do you keep them in, in such a format? So, ganun, no? so you know, the challenges again for, you know, for archives and archivists. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So with that, thank you very much, Father Albert. I think you've just uh, given us something to think about, particularly the future of uh, archives, archiving and archival research. Challenge na nga ito because of the pandemic. No, We couldn't really go uh, and live through many of our archival materials. At the same time, I think on your part, wow, oo nga pala, no? iba-iba na yung format na ating communication. So, uh, the social media, the texting, so that will be the future of our exchanges and uh, our correspondence. So, we'll just ask the Father, maybe last words, a few words before we close. Okay, Father. Um, I am only encouraged, no? uh, all those who are attempting to write their, the history of their parishes, no? Uh, Take this opportunity that we're celebrating 500 years no, of the introduction of Christianity to gather data no, uh, about your parishes, no, gather material, especially the new parishes, no, pictures, souvenir programs, stories coming from uh, uh, di different uh, uh, personalities in your in your parish, no. Because uh, I mean the, the, the parish really the, the, the community, no? so and history should be able to, should should reflect no, the life of that community. No? So yeah, so uh, I encourage you to to, to, uh, to be patient, to work hard, no? and uh, hopefully you know, uh, uh, this uh, this year you know, we will see a lot of uh, uh, parish histories being written. Okay, no, okay, thank well you. said. And uh, before we close, uh, what we would like to do is uh, maybe to inform everybody. So I would like to ask Miss Bev to share. A poster that we are trying to advance and um, to share to all our onliners and frontliners. So, Miss Bev. We have uh, the contact for the Archdiocesan Archives of Manila. So, ito po ang uh, inyong access to communicate no to Father Albert sana Father Albert buksan mo yan ha marami yan sila isusulat no arcam.archives at arcam.org oh madali ang tandaan arcam.archives at arcam.org okay so you can <clears throat> forward your queries and your requests here and uh, more or less they'll be able to give you an idea if there are things, no? There are information that they have in their storage, no? Doon sa holdings nila. So, yan po ang ating uh, connection sa ating Archdiocese and Archives. So, today is the 2nd of August. And for the whole month of August, I'd like to run you through the schedule of our Church History Webinar. Next Monday, 9th of August, we have Writing the History of the Parish 2. So this is Archdiocese of San Fernando. So we have with us, we will have with us Miss Nina L.B. Tomen um, from the Archdiocese of San Fernando. On the 16th of August, we will have uh, Writing the History of the Parish Part 3, that's the Archdiocese of Zamboanga. We have Miss Maria Cristina Camiones. And on the 23rd of August, we will have, uh, of course, Father Antolin the Oy, um, for doing research in the Archivo Segreto Vaticano. 
So on the first three apostolic delegates to the Philippines. No? So ito po yung ating August schedule. Please block that in your calendars. And uh, we hope to see you again um, next week and the succeeding Mondays for the whole month of August. Okay, thank you very much, Father Albert. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can have, uh, are, is there another announcement that uh, Bev would like to share? So my announcement for Basi Bev. Okay. Uh, anyway, this is uh, one small announcement that we would like to share to everybody. We will be sponsoring the CBC Episcopal Commission of the Cultural Heritage of the Church. We will have a heritage forum on the controversial reclamation in Domaguete. So the episode of heritage forum is Reclamos a Reclamacion, Clamors Against the Domaguete Reclamation Project. That will be next week. Uh, no, the Two weeks from now, no? August 17th, Tuesday. So it will be live on the USDG SCC PET in the CBCP Episcopal Commission for the Cultural Heritage of the Church. This is supporting the advocacy of our Domaguete Diocese to counter that move for, towards the reclamation of their Baywalk. No? So this is quite critical and the various groups have um, provided their valuable support no, with regards to this advocacy. So yan po ang ating poster, and I hope you can join us and share with us this, um, this uh, fervor to stop this reclamation. As we close, may we ask everybody to join us in our closing prayer. No? And um, we hope that you will be able to join us again next Monday. Sige po, let's have our closing prayer. Should Father, we come to you in Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by our guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady 
health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. With that, maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng ating sumubaybay to all our um, Church Heritage onlineers and frontliners both here in the discussion room and to our FBs. No? So please continue to follow us uh, on the various platforms and we hope that uh, you continue watching every Monday until the month of September. We still have a roster of speakers coming up for all of you. And I hope you are beginning to write your church stories. So again, maraming salamat po. Good afternoon and have a blessed week.